Hello and welcome to round two of the Parenting Roundabout podcast. I'm Terry Morrow and I'm here with Katherine Holeko. Say hi, Katherine. Hello. Usually on Parenting Roundabout, we talk about parenting issues, but once a week, Catherine and I like to get together to discuss TV, movies, books, and other entertainment topics because it's nice to talk about something other than parenting for a change. Uh, this week, we'll be continuing our sports night and West Wing watches, but first, it was Showstoppers Night on Dancing with the Stars, and that brought a lot of pretty good dancing, I thought. It brought yeah. Mark Ballas home to sing. It brought Adina Menzel to judge for unknown reasons. <laughs> it brought uh, bromances and a sisterhood, and also, as we had hoped, an upbeat and merciful end to Mary Lou's mirror ball <laughs> odyssey. We know she will always remember her time on Dancing with the Stars because she can't help it. She can't forget <laughs> anything that's ever happened to her. It's all lodged in her brain. Every uncomfortable moment with Derek will live forever. <laughs> It's it's hard not to think that her joy in the samba there tonight was somehow she knew she was going home. It's like (laughs) somebody tipped her that, have a good time, sweetie. It's your last one. And she was like, yes. Yes. I'm going to enjoy it. She seemed happier and more enthusiastic tonight than she had. Yeah. And I'm pretty impressed with our, like, picking four winners from the beginning and... All yes. four the, are in the semifinals. The spoiler is going to be Jana. Does she hang on and, right. and bump one of our faves off? That is the question. That but is still, the question. but still, you know, when there's when 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 we got four, all four, and there's yes. only five left. Yes, that's pretty good. We did good, and they were charming and good from the beginning, and mm-hmm. uh, really, uh, you know, from a crop that didn't look that impressive at the beginning. These, yeah. This is a good final five. I mean, they're all really strong and um, really know how to play the game well and really have good personality. I don't think you would necessarily have known that James was somebody who's going to be able to do that. I had never right. heard of him before. And, you know, on paper, he didn't look that likely. And um, Kelvin also is just delightful. And mm-hmm. I don't know that you would necessarily have guessed that. Tara is, I mean... You hear reality TV person and right. don't necessarily expect to enjoy their presence on something. And she's just been delightful also. And Lori, of course, we knew was going to be. Um, Jana is okay. I mean, I don't hate her. I just am less interested in her than the other four. Right. And... I don't have like a ginger problem <laughs> exactly. with her. Like yes. I did yes. where yes. I had like an irrational, not right. hatred, but just annoyance Go home. with yes. ginger. Um, last season and Jana, I'm like, just like, whatever, she's there. She's yeah, fine. She's just kind of, I mean, they, they did so much sexing up earlier on. that was kind of icky and they mm-hmm. kind of backed off of that a little bit. Maybe it's just the dances they've had, but, uh, so, I mean, she's okay. And I like that she's friendly with Lori. I think that's sweet. Uh, I've, yes. you know, it wasn't just made up for this one. I've noticed them up in the balcony from time to time, just goofing off together. So mm. I think it's genuine. And uh, Calvin and James were adorable in their little team thing, yes. too. That yes. was so cute. Um, and they just both seem so game. <laughs> it's uh-huh. like, yes, I will put on a unitard and dress up like cats. <laughs> right. Sure, why or not? Or a very, very bright green, shiny suit. <laughs> exactly, yes. That his, his, his dance was, I, I thought of all the dances of the evening, maybe the one I enjoyed the least. It just seemed very, very busy and like his heart wasn't quite in it as much as it has been for other things. This was, he was James's so the Wiz dance. About yeah. Sharna not being now, able to do it. I don't know if they are actually having some sort of I am sorry for James's girlfriend showmance mm-hmm. or they're just editing it that way, but somebody on the Dancing with the Stars sh- staff is shipping them pretty hard because they had lots of little nuzzly moments tonight. And they really did. <laughs> it's like I'm thinking, oh, Blondie, you better get yourself back in the audience. <laughs> Have them put that spotlight on you again. Because um, hmm. they really, I mean, they've always had, I thought, pretty good chemistry from the beginning, and it's really, they're playing it up now. Yeah. Oh, boy. So... They definitely were. Yeah. So I hope I hope she's able to dance. I mean, she should come back for the end. She should save herself for the semifinals right. and the finals. 
she shouldn't, you know, blow it on the little whiz number. But right. uh, Jenna is perfectly fine for that. And I don't think he's in any danger in not making the finals. So I enjoyed Lori and Dal's dance a lot. I like that number from Chicago anyway. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. um, but I don't. And then she's like, should we ask my mom? <laughs> But then he was just like, no, <laughs> he's so like snarly. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. What happened to, to Mr. Weepy Emo Val from last yeah, week? Yeah, exactly. He was <laughs> no longer. You don't suppose that wasn't genuine, do you? <laughs> Could it be? <laughs> but it's like, you know, she did very well. She, somebody had to tell her, don't smile. This is not a dance that you smile for. Because she kept accidentally smiling and then mm-hmm. stopping just because... Those smiles want to come out, you know? She can't they help do. it. She is who she is. But I'm not really sure why we need to have a dance in which she has to be sexy, you know? Mm-hmm. For an adult, I could see you saying, hey, bring out this side of yourself. It's a natural part of you. Here, let's play it up. But she's 16, and she's a very young 16. She's a gymnast. Right. She's gymnast 16, which is like right. 12. So... <laughs> Why do we have to do... Really? Does she have to? I don't know. It yeah. was a great dance and she did it amazingly. Some of those lifts and flings around and stuff where she was just mm-hmm. kind of like... like Who was it? Tom said she was sticking to him like Velcro. Right. Those were awesome. But, you know, I don't know. Well, I mean, you could argue that if it's a tango, it has to be sexy. I guess. I but guess then, it does. you know, does she have to do a tango? At some point, I guess she, I guess really she does. does have to. <laughs> but I just don't really need her to have to yeah. be sexy. And if it embarrasses right. her, which it clearly does, I don't think that's made up. I think she's just like, ooh, boys, you know? <laughs> <It's> just, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is not something that's in her wheelhouse. So, mm-hmm. but she did fine, I thought, other than the occasional smile breaking through. I thought she did very well. Her facial expressions were pretty good. Um, right. The wink was very well-timed. And Yes, I did catch that, even though I was going very quickly <laughs> through all of this. Well, she had the serious face and she did this wink and then she smiled I, and it's like, oh I did no. See the wink. Yes. <laughs> That's not appropriate. But um <laughs> anyway, she was she was adorable. It was a wonderful dance and and you like exponentially better than the one that Jenna and Gleb got a 10 for, all 10s for. Yeah, there was it's many like... many I, did, I don't think anybody got anything less than a nine, right? I think that's right, yeah. It and, was all nines and Yes, them. and in fairness, everybody did pretty good. I thought even Mary Lou did really good for her. Mm-hmm. I thought that was, dance was really enjoyable. And and Tara's, Tara's dance, I thought was, she got all tens too, right? For her, not really, a, not really a Charleston because she can't do a Charleston, but right. in the spirit of a Charleston. Right. I honestly can't quite remember because there were so many that were. Yeah. Everybody was, everybody was doing well tonight. Everybody was getting high scores and that's okay. And then they did the, the team dances, which I thought were pretty good. I, boy, yeah. the, the, uh, Marilou and Tara had the everything, including the kitchen sink dance. <laughs> right. The <laughs> fake skirt. Yes. Thing. And yes, yes, they that did. Was a, that was a, we have gone to the back, to the big box of tricks, and we are going to bring them all out. There was no mm-hmm. glowing body paint, but maybe under their dresses. You never know. Just about <laughs> if, if things weren't going well, they would have turned off the lights. And, uh... <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, though they were fun. And, I mean, I know the, the Lori and Jana <sighs> and one was very rivy, you know, yeah. your favorite. That your favorite was, genre. That was definitely a so you think you can dance number because it was. Mm-hmm. It's a dance about domestic violence, and it's, you know, okay, yeah. <laughs> can we have a dance about dancing, about right. happiness, about Here's fun? An idea. <laughs> but I mean, I guess Jana has had a, a, a personal story of right bad marriage, so I, you know, it it all fits in her. Her journey, I guess, Mm -hmm. if we Mm -hmm. must, if we must think of this show in terms of a journey, it fits with that. But boy, did it, it would have fit right at home on So You Think You Can Dance, Mm -hmm. where they dance about tragic things all the dang time. Right. So um, let's see, is there anything else on there we need to talk about? Julianne had remarkably normal hair. (laughs) Because now you're going to be checking for that every Although time. Although she had the same hairstyle that we were disliking on Felicity Huffman last week, mm, which, yeah. as we will discuss in sports nights or sports night segment later, 
she lost that by the end of those four episodes. She had normal hair again. So apparently she passed that bad she hair passed it to on Kim. to Julianne. Oh, to Kim. Well, and also Kim. Uh, yes. that, Kim that, oh. that hairstyle moves around. Yeah. Meanwhile, I think that Julianne's hair got stuck on Leona Lewis because she had that very what-the-heck hair, I thought, uh-huh. when she did her singing. Not a lot of really great singing on tonight's show, actually. <laughs> so they, when they did that dance to Falling Slowly, it was a beautiful dance. And it's a beautiful song. And oh my gosh, was the singing awful. <laughs> Flat and just, oh, just, could you just spring for the recording? Spring for the, please, yeah. please, just spring for the recording. And even Adina Menzel, who's a great singer, I thought didn't sound so great. So yeah, I couldn't, it's their I couldn't acoustics. watch that one. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one to fast forward through. I muted it and watched more of West Wing. <laughs> <laughs> so next week is the semifinals. Yeah. So does that mean next week one it's... person goes home or two? I can't remember the structure of this show I've watched so very many times. Are there four <laughs> people in the last episode and then one gets eliminated and then they do a bunch of stuff? Or... I feel like. Yeah, well, I don't know. I feel like they might eliminate two next time, but they didn't really say that. They did not, so maybe not. I don't know. I hope that it's Jana that goes home and that that, uh, Tara, Calvin, James, and Laurie are our final four, but I would not feel terribly sad if if it were Tara because I think she's done a great job and... Mm -hmm. I think she's done a perfectly re- respectable job. And I think it's, I think I would like my final three to be Lori, Calvin, and James. Okay. And so either one of the oh, other ones. I agree with that. Home. Yeah. Um, those, those seem to be the three that have the most potential. I think that I've enjoyed their dances the most, that they seem to have the whole package the most mm-hmm. and the best choreography. And Jana could very well sneak into that final three. Knock off Calvin, I would guess. Mm-hmm. But I hope I not. See that? I hope yeah. not. But yes, I. I, <laughs> I think James and Lori are pretty much of a lock, uh, mm-hmm. as much as there ever is in this show. Because who knows how they count voting and who votes? And but my sense is that those two are pretty safe. And right. That Jana is the spoiler for any of our foursome and threesome that we would like to see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just because somebody must be voting for her, right? Well, she's always in the I bottom know. too, but she keeps on keeping on. She keeps on. She gets she's, good scores from those she judges. She gets good scores, yeah. She's paying them off well. <laughs> that is helping her. Apparently sure. she's set up Julianne with a better hairstylist now, so she's going to be getting, <laughs> getting good scores from her. <laughs> anyway, on we go to our Sports Night Marathon, which uh, we this week we watched The Sweet Smell of Air. Dana Get Your Gun, and the crowd goes wild, and celebrities. Uh, in this uh, foursome, we see really sort of the beginning and the end of the uh, of the almost Dana-Sam romance arc. And, oh, okay. Well, he left at the end of... I know, uh, I saw him leave, but I, I didn't I, know. I, it. Well, uh, yes, I'm not 100% sure he does not come back. But this okay. is the end of the immediate arc of that, with him leaving. And... Uh, did you know when he was telling her he was going to stay that he was going to leave? I didn't. Okay. No, I I did notice, or as what what does Josh Malina now say? I did bump on <laughs> the fact that um, he gave in so easily. Yeah, you know that she's like, stay, stay. I want you to stay for one more night, and and he kept saying, no, I'm going on vacation, and and then fairly quickly he said, oh, okay, I'll stay. Yeah. Um. And I thought, oh, wow, that was, I didn't expect him to do that. Yeah. I just didn't think that was in his character. Right. Um, and it happened so fast. And then it turned out, obviously, that he Yeah. Was at, at the point where he said lying. that, I remembered that he, we see him leaving. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, I find it improbable that they would have this little flirtation. And yet it was extremely enjoyable seeing the two of them flirting around mm-hmm. together. So uh, that, that speech that. Sam has about the gun when she's you know, trying to give right. this great speech. He seems really an interesting character, which uh, just sort of who was just sort of there for a while. Um, but I enjoyed it. And with the end of that, we then have the start of the Jeremy dates a porn star arc, which <laughs> kind of runs a close second to the dating plan as maybe bad ideas. Because... Well, go back for a second to because. 
So after with the one where um, Sam leaves, that was the third one of the four that I we watched? that was, and the crowd goes wild. So they never show Dana, no. say, you know, being sad or mad or anything they about did not. the fact she oh. just came back in the next episode with better hair. Yeah. So apparently she drowned her sorrows in... at her hairstylist and just said, <laughs> these things falling in front of my face are driving are me crazy. Really annoying. And I got this lump in the back of my head. Whenever I sit in a high back chair, it bumps up to it. Can you just give me simple straight hair? And you're, she's a new woman. And she also has more sensible shoes at yeah. some point in this episode. Yes. And believe. she was wearing a perfectly nice top and pants. So, yes, her she's she's got a whole new lease on life. And uh, I thought Natalie and, and Jeremy's breakup, which was that in, that was in Dana, Get Your Gun. Yes. I thought it was unfortunate, but realistic, kind of, that, I mean, it was fast. It was abrupt. Mm-hmm. But I could see them having that fight. I've had that fight before, so <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I didn't know that it it needed to be a breakup fight. Like, right. I mean, but one of them definitely needed to, you know, Natalie. I think needed to accept like this is not his thing, right? And so you, if you want to go out to a club and dance and whatever, then go with your girlfriends exactly. and do other things with your boyfriend. Yeah. And if you're going to force him, you can't make him have a good time. So. That's right. I, mean, I think that's a, that's a completely reasonable fight. And I understand his hurt over it. And I understand her hurt over it. And I guess we're supposed to assume they've, mm-hmm. they've had it before and that it's, but it's just right, like, it's like we've had it's... X number of episodes of adorableness and all of a sudden, Ugly, bye, done. Right. (laughs) Well, because, right, when they've had fights before, they've been very sort of like almost cute fight. They have. You know, and and they resolve pretty quickly. He's breaking up with her and she's not accepting it. She's like, so, yeah, I... I can't remember how this reconciles by the end of the episode, end of the series, so I won't say anything, but... Sort of if your fight with your girlfriend was, I don't want to go out with all your fancy friends, and then you wind up dating a porn star. I don't know. I think you're kind of undercutting things a little bit there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Although apparently we know what he's doing at home when he's uh, right. not going out. But mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, just... but they, they've talked about that before, like where the two of them yes. would yes. watch together. Yes. So. so, but. So in in the episode that we watched, though, it was just them meeting. It yes. wasn't him actually no. seeing her again. So That's right. That's coming. So I spoiled yes. that, apparently. But okay. uh, I like Paula Marshall, and she was I – thought, I thought their banter was very cute and very mm-hmm. nicely done, right up to the point where she was a porn star. So <laughs> it's just like – these are the times where you wonder – what event from Aaron Sorkin's life is he drawing on here for this completely random right. information? Because I doubt, I, I mean, I think Jeremy has a point that a guy like him does not go to a bar and a porn star starts hitting on him. I don't <laughs> think that that's something that happens in the natural world all that often. I don't know. I'm not a guy. No. Don't know. <laughs> Could be. But it seems to lack the ring of truth. Yes. So anyway, that is, I I recall that as being an unfortunate arc, even though, you know, the actors gamely pursue it. Mm-hmm. Um, so what else do we have going on in these four? Um, I liked in The Sweet Smell of Air, which I watched now two weeks ago because mm-hmm. we were originally going to talk about it then. Right. Uh, I, I enjoyed Sam kind of getting getting a load of Sally. That was kind yeah. of fun. Even okay. though, again would somebody in Sally's position come into his office and then start talking about who she's been sleeping with? Yeah. Probably that. not. It made mm-hmm. for an amusing little bit for those of us who've been watching along, but mm-hmm. yeah, I'll take yes. it if it's funny. Right. And it Which was. it generally was. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were said to Dana that, that Sally was a vacation spot for all the men she dates. <laughs> <laughs> that was enjoyable. <sighs> What was going on with the guys? Casey had his little spell of not being able to see well and lots of jokes. And uh, Right. They played their little celebrities game. Yeah, there actually was more focus on Dana and Natalie and, you know, instead of the two guys in 
in many of these. And and his Dan psychiatrist has been out of this uh, for a while. Mm-hmm. So I think she, I, I, you know, I really, my memory of the rest of this season is pretty light. And really, there's not too much left. We have like seven episodes left. So we have two right. weeks. So we're in the semifinals of sports. <laughs> That's right. It's going to end the same week. We're going to wrap up everything at once. <laughs> we'll not see. know what to do with ourselves. Who wins the sports night trophy? Let's see. So, um, and now we move on to our West Wing watch, which we do in conjunction with the West Wing weekly podcast, watching along. By the way, I bought their t-shirt and now I see they have a sweatshirt. Yes. I would have bought the sweatshirt because it's freaking winter. But no, I bought the t-shirt, so now I'm feeling pretty I stupid. think the t-shirt looks cooler, though. The t-shirt is, I agree. The t-shirt is cool. And it's the sign a better language design. on the back, that's true. But right. I'm not going to be able to wear it, like, for six months. Well, so. you'll have to wear it with, with a cardigan or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wear it over a sweatshirt, apparently. I think I got a large. <laughs> but come on, guys. Like, make a list. We're having these things. Here are the dates they're going to come out. So well, they're in LA, well. so they don't care if it's cold. That's they true. have no concept. They have no concept. <laughs> I suppose that's true. <sighs> oh well, I just saw that tonight. <laughs> yeah, I just saw today. <laughs> they are getting quite into the merch. I don't know. We're mm-hmm. missing the boat. <laughs> yeah. Very little, very, very little parenting roundabout merch. <laughs> that's true. It's an extremely limited edition. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Only for the very biggest fans, which is ourselves. <laughs> yes. Well, no, I gave one for my one to my friend Mike. So That's one, true. one fan has it. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we watched the Portland trip of the West Wing, uh, which featured uh, a night flight to Portland on which CJ was to be humiliated for having teased the president about Notre Dame, and uh, Sam is having a crisis of writing, and. Uh, mm-hmm. They briefly consider proposing 100,000 new teachers, but then don't. Uh, right. And the energy secretary or assistant energy secretary flies to Portland so you can have a meeting with the president on the way back. This is mentioned a bunch of times, though we never actually see the meeting. We never see the meeting. And we also never see CJ having to sing, sing. the fight song. Which no, she we is, do not. Which she's told she's going to have to do. And then yes. she doesn't. And Danny is still being a thorn in her side because he can and then on the ground, uh, Leo is dealing with something with the tanker, and Josh is having an extended dialogue with a, a gay Republican congressman. And um, Donna is going on a bad date oh, wearing yeah. a red dress and bonding right. with Ainsley over their mutual blondness. <laughs> Do you think we look alike? <laughs> I thought that, you know, this episode had so much compromise, you know, so much like we're going to have to hold our nose and do this because it's it's better than nothing or because it's the only way things get done. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was sad to watch, you know, because it's you know that that's what happens. And, you know, they have these ideals and. They're going to let Bartlett be Bartlett, but in this one, he is really not allowed to be Bartlett. Oh, no, no. Yeah. And the, and also Leo saying that he likes to go out there and he needs somebody to bring him back, which is, I think, what we talked about like five or six episodes ago. And weren't they just going to let him be out there? Mm-hmm. Because they're back to bringing him back. Yeah. It's just Toby gets to steer him back to the center of the road this time. Right. But so I with a good it, point it was, that it was just kind of sad, yeah. you know, because it was sad for the characters and it was sad because, you know, it's reality. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's so. true. But I thought, you know, in the light of what's happening today as people are listening to this, the end yes. of a particularly difficult election circuit, which is probably going to mm-hmm. then turn into a particularly difficult four years for whomever. But, mm-hmm. um, I, I thought that the the congressman's declaration that, you know, you don't, not all of your life has to be about one thing about you. That, mm-hmm. you know, we hear a lot about, well, all women have to vote this way because right. of women's issues or different different groups having to vote a certain way because of one thing about them. And it's so much more complicated than that. Right. You know, there right. are so many issues and this campaign has been made to be very, very black and white. And there's still reasons why people vote that have nothing to do with things that everybody's talking about, but have to do with 
other things in their life that they feel strongly about. So Mm -hmm. I thought that I always think of this episode. Yeah. When things like that come up, you know, so I liked that about it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a great point and a great connection to the craziness that we're living right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Anyway, anything else you wanted to say about this particular West Wing? In terms of the podcast, they had several guests. They had one to talk about the gay marriage issue. They had one to talk about the military. Um, So, yeah, they continue to bring in interesting people um, whenever they can. And it does kind of crack me up. They're like, well, I wanted to know more about blah, blah, blah. So I called up. (laughs) (laughs) Like as if that person was just waiting by the phone for their call. Like, oh, good. I get to talk about this. I mean, they all seem to be fans of the show. That's true. That's, I like yes. when they talk to the actors and the I do. I like that and better. the staff. Although it is it is interesting to hear the real world political. Uh-huh. They usually keep those pretty short, and I appreciate that. They come yeah. on, they say their thing, and then they go. It's not like right. two hours with somebody. Right. The two hours are with an actor. I've yes. really really enjoyed those. I thought that, I think those are very good. Yeah, a lot of insight into a show right. that I like a lot. Absolutely. So that is going to be it then uh, for our round two today. Next week, we will be watching the Sports Nights episodes, The Local Weather, Draft Day Part 1, Draft Day Part 2, and April is the Cruelest Month, after which we will have only three episodes more. (laughs) Uh, And we will be watching the West Wing Season 2 episode, Shibboleth. And that is going to be it for our round two today. Please subscribe to our Parenting Roundabout podcast so you won't miss any of our episodes, including our daily speed rounds and weekly group chats. As always, you can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. Goodbye, Catherine. Goodbye, Terry. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody.